Welcome everyone, I'm Vince Kelvin, and you're listening to a pre-EC20 convention elite edition decade of your dreams. And we're here with someone whose understanding of magic and spirituality tops it all. For many of you, you're not new to his work. If you are, I could give many personal testimonials of how helpful his work is to me. And yet I think that the testimony that would be even more significant is I have witnessed so many people in their early 20s who would be unlikely to feel a deep spiritual connection through Frank's work, uh, experience a strengthening uh, that is very uncommon and that is also compatible with uh, all aspects of their life. So you see them thrive at a social level, at a professional, financial level. So, Frank, thank you so much for making the time, and I have a series of uh, very interesting questions for you. How are you, Frank? I'm doing well, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. My pleasure, Frank. So, my first question is, what is your vision of the evolution of magic and spirituality in the new decade? Oh, man, that's a beautiful question, because that's all about my purpose. That's exactly what I'm all about. See, um, I do believe that uh, spirituality, um, and specifically the occult, is unnecessarily mystified, uh, where it becomes almost like this weird thing uh, that, that only people do that have nothing to do with, with, with uh, kind of like the stuff that people usually want, right? Like the, 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 um, the status stuff. However, if um, magic and the occult is understood in the right way, we begin to see that actually everything that we do is spiritual in a way, right? Because, I mean, what is spirituality really? It's something that is beyond the physical. So the plan for your business has something to do with spirituality, okay? It's not, spirituality is not something that you do in, in, in a religious context per se. Spirituality is understanding the connection between mind and the physical world. You know, mind, emotion, physical world, that is alchemy, right? So when we look at spirituality from that point of view, we can create a holistic picture where our uh, physical experience, our internal experience, as well as our spiritual being can become one, can become whole again, and we can use spirituality to explore the physical world, but we can also use our physical experiences that we have in, let's say, business, that we have in, let's say, pickup, that we have in, in, in whatever uh, way in this physical world. We can use that to, to learn spiritual lessons. And that is really what I'm all about. See, yes, I'm a, I'm a magician. I'm an occultist, um, a, a sorcerer. Um, and I, I was trained very, very traditionally. So really, really the old guard, you know, those old guys that were very big on, uh, on understanding, like, the old classics. You know, I had to learn Latin. I had to, had to learn, uh, you know, even Sumerian languages to an extent. All right? But we live in a 21st century, and a lot of the mystification is not necessary anymore. And with all the changes uh, and, and, and new developments that we have seen in, in, in quantum physics, uh, neurolinguistics programming, and, and, and many, many other things, magic is, it has become understandable, and it has become something that the everyday person can use for themselves and, and, and can make work for them. See, uh, I believe to an extent we're all psychic. We can all develop these abilities. And even if, if, if a person doesn't want to develop these abilities, it's still important to understand their true nature as a spiritual being in the physical world. Because let me tell you something. I have been offering uh, spiritual services for quite some time now. And I've had clients from all levels, all success uh, levels, you could say, all kind of like, you could say, uh, levels in society, quote-unquote, even though I, I believe that stuff is bullshit, you know, the, the hierarchy thinking really doesn't make sense to me. But I've had people from the very top, I've had people from the very bottom, you know, all the way to, to, to the wife of a billionaire. I mean, that's a woman that has all the money in the world. But, you know, she was 
so fascinated with what I have to offer. Why? Because she was lacking meaning in her life, spirituality. See, and this is what a, a recurring theme that I hear from so many people, people that, that are very, very high up, that have reached, let's say, uh, high levels of success uh, monetarily, you know, uh, like multimillionaires, billionaires, whatever. And what these people suffer from and yes they do actually suffer because money is not the answer the world is not about materialistic things they're a means to an end and by no means do i say they're wrong but uh, it's not wrong to want to have these things it's great you should you should life wants more and more and more but the point is you need meaning in life you know so if you don't want to run into self-sabotage which is what a lot of people do at the top you know uh, they, they they have reached their goal and and then that's it. It's game over. And you know what, ha- what happens to these people? It's, it's, a, it's a depression of sorts. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a meaninglessness. Now, that's not going to happen to you if you understand yourself as a spiritual being. And as a spiritual being, there's no end to your growth because what, what we're really doing here is we're learning. We're learning. We're having experiences. We're growing as a being. We're, we're learning to uh, create in, in, in matter in, in deal with energy, space, and time, and the emotions, and all the internal fucked up mechanisms that we that we uh, have to deal with. But that's that's really the game, and that's wisdom. That's accumulating wisdom. We learn how to how to operate this weird machine that we inhabit here, right? And, and hopefully, the spiritual being that is behind all of that, that is having the experiences, walks away from from this life, maybe into a new one, and has gained some some understanding. You know, now. It's a game, and as, you, as soon as you understand things like that, as soon as you look at things like that, you are capable of, of going further and further and further and further and further in your development because you're able to create a new game for yourself. You know, When you have a game over in your mind, meaning I've reached a certain level now, okay, that's fine, um, you are going to self-sabotage you're going to get yourself to a point again where you have to now act otherwise you're going to be destroyed and that's one way to 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 keep going but the the more productive way and the safe way to do it would be to invent a new game for yourself you see so what i'm trying to say is this the the my vision for magic in the 21st century is people understanding it as a uh as as part of life. It's not something that um, you do when you have time for it. It's, it. You do everything from spirit, if that makes sense. You understand, first and foremost, you're a spiritual being. That's the only reality there is. Everything else is, is subject to change. The unchanging thing, the only thing that is real is that you are a spirit, spiritual being, having a physical experience. And from that, magic will become more powerful because then we can actually demystify it, understand spirits for what they are, control them better. We can uh, develop our psychic abilities better because we have the right framework and we're going to be more successful in whatever else we want to do in life. So, yeah, that's that's really my vision for the new decade and that's what I'm working on hard. <laughs> it's all good. It's, it's phenomenal. It's beyond word. Frank, uh, you kind of led into my next question, which is, do you foresee that the understanding that we're spiritual beings having a human experience might become the norm? You know, it's something that has been a recurring theme in some spiritual community that they would foresee that eventually it would reach critical mass. Do you think that's even something to, to hope for, to focus on, or what do you think will be the dynamic at the level of humans recognizing that we are spiritual beings? It is really, um, I believe it's, how should I put it? I don't know how, how it's going to take place at a, at a societal level or even, you know, globally. Um, now, my uh, purpose you could say my purpose is to, to, to reach out to as many people as I can and to teach them these arts and to teach them my understanding of these art and uh, of this art and then to have them lead their lives and explore their, their, their own reality in whatever way they want. Now, 
I hope that's going to have an effect uh, on a societal level. Um, and I do believe that there are changes on the way in that, in that direction, even though we don't see that in the mainstream yet. But uh, the, see, the, the, I've, I've stopped asking myself a question like that because it, it seems to almost be a distraction from what I'm supposed to do, which is basically just deal with my direct environment, with dealing with, with my direct communication channels. And that's how I can serve that goal the best. So I don't know. Is society uh, catching up to that? I don't know. Do I, know. do I believe that it's the future and eventually we have to? Yes, otherwise uh, the world's going to uh, <laughs> blow up in smoke, right? <laughs> but is that going to happen? I don't know. All I can do is, is what I do. And that's enough. Now, uh, what you said before, your first answer, kind of reminded me of the uh, statement that Carl Jung made later in his life. Uh, He looked back on his work and he uh, stated that he believed that all human suffering, uh, be it struggle at an emotional level or addiction or an all human craving were one thing, a return to spirituality. It was really calling for that. So I don't know if you want to elaborate on that, uh, but it, I, I found it interesting that uh, I just uh, um, heard you say, say, say that. So maybe for people, you know, it's easy to think that it's a matter of depression, that it's a matter of money and so on but it's a matter of uh, uh, lack of a spiritual alignment and sense, if I understand well. Correct, Frank? Uh, yes, 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 yes. Now, there are different, um, uh, you could say different, different layers to, to that problem, um, the way I understand it, because some of the suffering that we go through is indeed physical, you know, like, uh, or let, let's say something's wrong with the body, let's say something is, is really going on there. Yes, that's that's obviously a problem. Let's say there's this a financial problem going on, and there's definitely something going on there. Yes, I mean this is a real problem, but the point is this: uh, that's part of the physical universe. Everything in the physical universe can be considered uh, being made up or containing uh, energy, and it can be defined as energy is. Uh, moving in a time-space uh, continuum. So let me, let me make it clearer. Whatever we do in the world is taking place in a physical matter reality. Now, there is an occult secret, which is really like a, really, it's not that much of a secret. Everybody uses that to an extent, where higher levels or dev, levels of, of, uh, of lower, den, uh, lower density or higher density can affect levels of lower density. So the mind can affect physical events, the physical matter, uh, the body and whatnot. So the problem usually, in my experience, is not necessarily what, we pers- what we're experiencing in the physical world. It is more our, us being stuck in that situation mentally. So as we, as we take on a different perspective, as we expand the perspective as we go into our understanding that we are spirit we can affect not only our thoughts but also our emotions and as a, as a result of that actions and eventually the physical world will catch up with that so um the problem is identifying with the physical body and its experience too much now mm. as we are in this experience too much and we're, we're dealing with the nervous system and it's, and it's shenanigans and, you know, and I mean, there, there could be so much that happened in the past where we had no, no control over it. Now the subconscious has a trauma and uh, a memory triggers, I mean, uh, some sort of experience, some sort of stimulus from the outside world triggers that memory. And now we go through that emotion again. And the, 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 the tricky thing is that the more we experience it internally, the stronger, the, the, the experience becomes because the, 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 the nervous system um, will then have a stronger, um, a stronger pathway to, to that memory, if that makes sense. So 
um, we almost practice the suffering at that point. Now, what we need to do in these situations, and not only in these situations, but we should have a daily practice that brings us back into a state of consciousness where we definitely experience ourselves from the outside. Uh, and, and then, once we are outside, we can actually redirect the internal processes. And when the internal processes are redirected into the direction that we, that we, uh, that we want them to go, the whole world becomes um, kind of like uh, changeable. <laughs> because we have changed ourselves, the outside world will begin to change. And, I mean, everybody knows that, that the internal world or the internal representation is not identical with, with, with the outside world. So as we change how we process things, we, we see different opportunities, we see different pathways, we see different ways of how we could affect our situation. But that all starts with the basic understanding that there is a spirit, a being outside of that whole machinery that I just described that is experiencing through this machinery. And when we go back into this understanding, we can affect our own emotions, but it goes even further than that because spirit can affect energy and it can generate energy at will. So the next step would be beyond, uh, beyond the self, beyond uh, influencing the own, uh, our own body. Uh, it goes into influencing other people's thoughts, interacting with non-physical entities, which are just as real as you or me, they're just less dense. So they're all around us affecting people, but um, they can be brought under your control, which is basically just, uh, you know, something like evocation, you know, witchcraft. If you deal with spirits, non-physical entities that are basically an accumulation of energy and you learn to control that. But it all starts with controlling yourself. Now, does that mean that all suffering is, is coming from the, uh, the, 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 the need to reconnect the spirit? Yeah, I, I definitely agree. Um, the consequence of that should be that we live life to the fullest. We live in this, in this physical world and really we enjoy whatever it has to offer. But at the same time, we understand that it is a being that is experiencing through the body. And uh, that's probably the best way to, to deal with all that. I'm doing my best to keep those podcasts to a length that allows people to listen when they have a quick break or so on. So we got about five more minutes and uh, there's kind of three questions in one that I'm very curious about. So uh, I'll state the three questions and then you take it wherever we want to take it, Frank, and I really, really appreciate the time. Your work is absolutely surreal and has impacted me unlike anything else. Um, so what is your sense, the first question is, what is your sense of the universe or are you even stating it as using the word God? What is your sense of that source? And then uh, do you think that eventually all the deities, the different forms of spirits are all from one core? And the third question, if so, then what would be their relation and functions towards and within that source? What would be the dynamic? Is it a dynamic that, that resembles a human dynamic where there's, I don't know, a capo and, uh, or, uh, and then button man's underneath or a dynamic that resembles a CEO, manager? So... Um, from your sense of the yeah. universe, is there a, one source, a one element to all the different representations that people can, can uh, enjoy? And then if so, or maybe not, I don't know what your answer would be, but if so, what, what would be the dynamic of the, the hierarchy there? Okay. Well, that would be, that's a good question. Now, It's easy, easiest understood if we go back to the old datum, which is as within, so without, uh, which is absolutely true. So here's the thing. Um, there's a saying in the Bhagavad Gita that states that all deities reside inside of the human body. Now, let me take a step back here. All mythologies, all religions, all 
art forms, you could say, they're metaphoric attempts to explain something that is really beyond words. Um, and I would actually include physics and natural science in that, uh, in that group. It's an attempt to explain something that is really beyond words. Now, we have different ways of describing the interaction of, um, of forces, really, you know, and forces in the universe that come together in an inner plane to create everything that we perceive around us, right? The most fundamental layer of reality or a level of physical reality could be, could be explained in terms of uh, quarks, right? Uh, we, have, we have these different subatomic particles that come together in a certain combination, and from that, a- atoms emerge, and from that, molecules emerge, and from that, macromolecules emerge, and from that, life emerges, you know, single cells, and from that, the whole complexity of, of living beings that we see all around us, entire biology, and, and everything can be explained through that model, right? So when we go back and, and, and look even deeper, it must come from a specific source. Now, what we just described and what we just went through was the, the, the development and um, the, 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 the creation of a physical universe. Now, there's also a mental universe, and we're definitely part of that as well. There's a, a whole universe of thought, okay? And in occultism, that will be considered the mental plane. But there's also a universe of energy, which is the astral plane, Okay. Now, coming, having having uh, the mental plane and the and the, uh, the level of energy, meaning the astral plane combined, we have an idea, and we have energy, emotion. Okay, energy in motion, emotion. So we have energy, we have a thought, an intention, and that combined creates a non-physical entity. You could call that a god form. You could call it an angel. Or you could call it a demon. Now us as human beings, we have to put that into a human framework in terms of, oh, this is an evil being, this is a positive being, this is this and that. Now, it is true that these entities have certain um, characteristics, okay? So there are entities that help with accumulating wealth because that's a, you could say, a a certain frequency on a spectrum, right? Or even a certain, um, let's say it's a certain tone, you can say that it's, uh, it's, it's a certain quality of energy, and it is true that different entities, different deities, stand for these different uh, qualities, and you can work with them. And but first and foremost, what you do is you attune yourself to that energy, and therefore, since you have become a container of that energy, as within, so without, the universe is going to reflect that back to you. You know, it's a, it's a vibrational universe. What we emit energetically, we will then ret- have returned back to us as, as, a, as a wave, right? Now, what the hierarchy in all of that is, is really this. I mean, there, there is one source for sure. There is one source for sure. As these things come into being, they are part of that source. Now, they're all necessary. So it's, it's essentially a dualistic game and and all of these different sides all of these different polarities necessitate each other now we can only create a game which is i think what the creator god did he created a game with polarities there are different polarities that came into being from that different natural forces came into being from that things that we perceive as as as, as positive negative and so on and so forth, different qualities. But they can all be traced back to polarity. So as that one thing, that one singularity, which we could call God or the creator, brings polarity into being, everything else is a result of that. So I would not necessarily see it in terms of hierarchy. I would see it more in terms of um, the ability to influence something. Now, let's say... You, coming back to the metaphor that you used where there was a capo who was supposedly at the top of the, of, the, of the food chain, who was supposedly at the top of the hierarchy and can affect the people below him, right? But let's say the, the, the people below him fuck up and they, they, they don't kick up the money that they needed and he gets affected by them. Now, 
he becomes the fact. He's not the cause anymore. Does that really mean that he's more powerful than them? I don't think so. So I wouldn't necessarily look at it that way. I would see it in terms of being able to affect something. And, of course, a spirit, let's say an angel. Let's say we would work with an angel. An angel is a force of nature. It has, it's immortal. It is super powerful. It's literally, literally a force like gravity. How could you describe that? How could you measure the power of that thing, right? So we can align ourselves with that entity, and we can affect it. So it's, it's, it's less about controlling an entity. It's more about attuning ourselves to it, okay? Now, I, and I believe that since everything comes from the same source, we are part of that source, or let's say a part of that source is within us. So a way to, 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 to use that practically in our lives would be to look for that core, look for that, attune ourselves to the, to that, to the best of our ability, and then live from that. You know, and the, the concrete effect in life that this is going to have oftentimes is going to be that things are just going to work out for you, for us, really. And this is, I believe, the exercise of the master. That's really how the master lives his life. He spends as much time as he can attuning himself to the source, to that's what we just described earlier, becoming that spiritual being that is just experiencing through the body. Now, as he lives his life like that, things are just going to work out for him. And see, believe me, believe me when I say that, when you do these things, you're going to, have, you're going to develop psychic abilities naturally because you're tuning yourself to a higher level of consciousness, and a higher level of consciousness that is not limited by physical matter reality can actually perceive things from the future, images from things that are going to occur years from now are going to pop into your mind you're going to see what another person is thinking or doing right now. You're going to understand things. You're going to get insight and glimpses into other people's minds, into your mind, into, into, into you know, things that happen to your own life and how they all relate to this present moment. So what we, I believe, all should do, you know, this is what Lao Tzu said. This is what, <laughs> uh, which I would say is one of my biggest mentors, actually, Lao Tzu. Um, and yes, I actually talk to Lao Tzu just for anybody who doubts me. Yes, I do talk to Lao Tzu because I can evoke spirit and I speak to these geniuses from the past. It's really about that. It's really about living your life and attuning yourself to the source and then living from that. And at that point, you become the ocean. You become the chessboard where the whole game is playing uh, out. You know? Um, it's, you know, I hope you understand that this is not... Uh, I put it, this is not enough time to really go into that concept. And please, I know. Me. I, I was thinking I would love to yeah. do a, a part two. Yeah. We're also going to do Zoom interviews, so I yeah. would uh, okay. uh, love this is of a richness and uh, yeah. wow! I uh, really, really, really appreciate everything, Frank, and yeah. the furthering of the yeah. the work that I was uh, able to yeah. to do with you. So. Um, if that's okay with you, we do have a little bit of a time constraint, uh, mm-hmm. so I'm, I'm down for a part two. This is so rich. Uh, I yeah, pass definitely. it back to you with maybe one, one sentence because I didn't want to interrupt words of conclusion, and Frank will be teaching uh, at EC20, and uh, if you wish to tell them how people can contact you, uh, please feel free to do so, but I know you're highly in demand, so it's like kind of a, you have to be sought after. Yeah. I just want to I just want to clarify that uh, whatever I just said here, yeah, it, it might sound very abstract, but it has extremely concrete applications in daily life, you know. And uh, when it comes to services, I'm in a new year in, in March. Actually, I'm going to stop uh, offering consultations and and, and uh, readings and ritual for hire, and. I'm doing that because I've got other business ventures that are going to take up too much time. But what I'm still going to keep offering are my meditation program, the Amana Mind Magic Mastery, which is basically a program where you can go from knowing nothing about magic up to a certain level. And then I got an order, a magical order, where I teach basically uh, everything that I know. They're both very, very um, 
you know, very I mean, amazing programs, really. Um, the, um, the, the thing that I wanted to say here is that these understandings that I was just trying to, to, try to put out there, they have very, very concrete effects and, and concrete applications for any area of your life. So the understanding of the physical or phys- philosophical structure that I just gave you applied to witchcraft is going to give you way more power to affect things in a non-physical way. And, and that will allow you to affect things in your, in your, in your business life and, um, I don't know, in, in, in any area of your life that you really want. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we should definitely do a part two. I'd love to do that. Uh, and all I can say is that the universe and life and, and, and what the mind can do is really, it's really, really fascinating. And trust me when I say most of you have not even started to explore your own power and what is possible by starting to, to, uh, to explore a spiritual path in your life. Frank, forever grateful and looking forward to a part two. And this was so rich. Thank you so much, Frank. And thank you guys for listening. Bye-bye.